It's my great pleasure to uh, introduce Tako Ozaki, our Managing Director of Suzuki Australia. And Tako will say a few words in a moment, but he's gone to some considerable effort to welcome all of you along to our Suzuki 2010 RMX 450Z new model presentation and product launch. Has been one of the most successful competition races in recent history, added in many supercross, motocross, and off road championship to the Suzuki Trophy cabinet. The new RMX 450Z is the latest embodiment of everything we have learned from that program and designed to offer the finest enduro machine to the market. Here we are at the 2010 RMX 450Z launch. We've waited for this for a long time. Poor old Suzuki's copped a lot of crap. We've been wondering when they're going to turn their 450 four-stroke motocross machine into an enduro bike. Here it is. We're stoked about it. So I've got Adam Riemann here with me. We're at the uh, official launch and we're going to put it through its paces now. I can't wait. Let's go. We were all excited, you know, it was, we knew it was going to be electric start, which is what the market needs and this class needs. Um, we knew that it was going to be fuel injected, so the RMZ is such a good package that we knew they could really base a good model off it. Yep. Yeah, racing or someone who doesn't need Reggio to go and ride, like, you know, there's a lot of people who don't need to travel on a road to get to where they want to ride or need that, so... You know, in that market, it's, you know, I think it's the leader of that class. Headlight tail, like electric start, the little trip meter on it, the speedo. So the gearbox, you know, it's a wider ratio box than the RMZ. So it's, um, it's perfect for what it is, you know. Yeah. This is the US model. Yeah, it's the US spec. It's a US spec bike, yeah. They come restricted, which is a, a muffler plug. Um, like a baffle in there, so you remove that. There's a throttle stop which is removed um, in the air box. You remove a like a rubber snorkel thing out of there, and it's too restricted. And then you just use a power up unit to, you know, program it to say all that's done and give it more power. Just listening to some of the other guys, they think it's quite abrupt and aggressive for an enduro bike, but. You know, that is it. They've, they've made it as a competition bike, not a complete trail package. If someone's expecting a WR or a CRF, they're not going to get it no, in the spot. It doesn't have rip your arms out the horsepower like an aggressive motocrosser. That's kind of there, but they've just smoothed it out. Yeah. But in terms of serious enduro riding, like the response to launch up over logs, rock ledges, or just react coming it's out of ruts, instant, it's isn't punchy. It? Yeah, yeah. Instant really punch, good. Which is good. I think. For a more average guy, such as perhaps myself, um, you could get yourself into trouble with that, but I think you're more likely to get yourself out of trouble when you don't see something. We can just give it a snap and the thing will just yeah. and hook up. I found the traction pretty good considering, you know, we had a mixture here today. It was quite wet and slippery under the trees, quite dry and rocky and, and dusty out of the trees. Yeah. So a bit of everything and not magnificent traction, but not but good traction. On the flat stuff, the off-camber stuff, and you know, in racing off-road, the, the grass track tests, it, it would be a good grass track bike. Mm. Um, initially, I felt it was too, it floated around like a boat too much. I was so impressed having ridden the RMZ on the shootout, the motocross, the bike, motocross yeah. bike. That and this bike was, is based on the 2010 motocross exactly bike. Exactly that, so and that's what I was expecting. I was expecting that same brilliance, that mojo and then it, realistically I, it, I had to do a lot more work than in expected just playing with the clickers and getting it to to handle me on on in these conditions for me i went back to standard on everything and into the bush and i felt a lot better on it yeah and um when i rode it with your settings it was just too hard for me and i was deflecting not yeah, deflecting okay. but it was just too hard when i softened yeah. it i found it a lot better but still has Manageable. that competition edge yeah it's not 
a bike you'd ride to relax on. No. But when I started getting up it, it actually started feeling a lot better and I, I started to really enjoy it. Generally the Japanese have a bad habit of taking their cutting edge motocross bike and just turning it into a fat farm bike, mm. but they haven't done that with the Suzuki. Like it's edgy, it's isn't just, it? It is. It's yeah. light. It's thin. You think you, it's just an RMZ with a headlight. <laughs> let's let's just wrap it up. Yeah, that's enough. I reckon. Probably we don't even give them that much. So it's definitely an edgy bike. I think uh, compared to the Japanese competition, it's more competition oriented, and that's exactly what Suzuki told us in the in the press release. We'll have to read more about it in ADB, but it's definitely an edgy, sharp, fast bike in the bush. It's a lot closer to an enduro spec bike in terms of having the headlight lighting coil and all that business. So there's half the job done, especially if you're racing the four day yeah. and you can get the B class yeah. competition license for the event. Mm. And yeah.